In this video, I want to share with you the 13 economic indicators I use to best estimate exactly what the economy is doing and also help me understand where the economy might be going so that I can allocate my portfolio of assets in a, in a way that's going to best serve me in terms of taking either advantage of what might be happening in a, in a positive sense or help protect me from what might be happening if I believe the economy is maybe heading for a dive. The first economic indicator, and this won't be a surprise to anybody, is GDP. The granddaddy, the catch-all economic indicator that really helps us determine what the true economic landscape looks like. Unfortunately, because it is only issued quarterly, there is a pretty significant time lag between what the actual GDP is doing and when the information about it is released. One indicator that might actually help predict GDP because it makes up such a significant portion of GDP is the retail sales number. This is the second indicator I use to help me understand what might be happening in terms of the economy. The best way to look at this is really on a year-over-year -year basis mostly because of the seasonality or seasonal nature of retail sales around holiday times and, and those types of things. The next indicator I look at that um, may help me understand even what retail sales might be doing is the Consumer Confidence Index. This indicator can give a really good understanding of what the spending and, and saving behavior might be of consumers will obviously drive the retail sales number and ultimately contribute uh, for the most part to GDP. The fourth economic indicator I like to use is actually called the leading economic index. It is a basket of indicators that are chosen to try to predict what the economy is going to do in the future. It's produced by the conference board and is available monthly. Uh, it really helps to kind of understand where the economy might be going. Uh, it is one thing to note though that the accuracy of the index uh, is a little bit ambitious insofar as it has probably predicted more recessions than have actually happened. So although it's interesting to look at, it has to be taken with a grain of salt against other indicators in the economy that might help sort of uh, neutralize the impact or the statements that the indicator might be trying to make. The next pair of indicators I like to look at are both a measure of business confidence. They are the Institute for Supply Management's uh, Purchasing Managers Index, uh, one for manufacturing and one for non-manufacturing uh, sides of the economy. I like to look at them independently just to give some a little bit of indication of what manufacturing might be doing relative to the services sector. Sometimes one may be going down while the other one's actually increasing. If they're both behaving in the same manner, that's sometimes something to look out for. The actual uh, indicator is really just based on a survey that gets sent out to uh, executives of companies all over the United States and really is uh, an indicator from their perspective as to whether things are improving or whether things are getting worse. Uh, typically, the PMI, as it's known, is uh, if, if it's above 50, basically things are getting uh, better or at least aren't getting worse. Uh, below 50, obviously an indicator that things might be getting choppy in terms of the economy. Uh, being a business indicator or business sentiment indicator, it can often lead what might be happening down the, down the way in terms of the GDP and other indicators that might show, might show in terms of future growth or decline in the overall economy. The next category of indicators I'd like to share with you is of course inflation, both on the producer side and on the consumer side. Obviously these indicators do drive interest rate decisions, they can influence how the stock market's performing, the bond market's performing, uh, etc. based on those uh, sort of knock-on effects from what those factors might be uh, telling us in terms of what might be happening in the economy. 
The next indicator I find really important to watch is the Fed funds rate itself. It's obviously been getting a lot of attention in the media lately with President Trump attacking the Fed for increasing rates too quickly. Uh, what that means you know, for the stock market in general, uh, historically as the Fed funds uh, rate rises, as long as it doesn't rise too quickly, the markets are able to digest uh, steady increases in the interest rate. What's careful or what you should be paying attention to really is at what rate it is increasing and or if it begins to flatten off. Um, there's some pretty strong indications historically that uh, as changes in the Fed funds rate uh, happen uh, dramatically, then there's usually something, uh, a knock-on effect or predictor there as to what might be happening in the economy uh, and the markets at large soon after that. The next economic indicator I like to pay attention to is the spread uh, in the yields between the 10-year and the 2-year uh, US Treasury bonds. So this is a classic indicator whereby uh, if the yield of the 10-year drops below the yield of the 2-year, that is a pretty strong signal for uh, impending recession in the next sort of 12 to 18 months. Um, that said, uh, you know, without going into what yield actually means or how bonds are priced effectively, the longer the duration of bond, the uh, higher the yield one would expect to receive because of the commitment uh, one is making in terms of the investment. Um, so when the demand for uh, longer duration bonds increases or outpaces the demand for shorter term bonds, uh, that uh, relationship inverts. And what that is effectively saying is that there's a lack of confidence in sort of the riskier assets in the short term, uh, which puts more demand on the longer duration bonds, effectively. The next indicator I want to talk about is the absolute yield of the 10-year treasury itself. Uh, this is a, an indicator because people are always watching what the 10-year yield is doing relative to its most recent trend. And when I say recent, I mean sort of the last few years, what, what the actual yield has done. Uh, there's not a whole lot of concern when the change is quite minimal, but when it moves dramatically is when it gets attention. And like the actual spread itself, as that yield if that yield direction actually changes or begins to look like it might be decreasing, that can also mean that there is a higher demand for the tenure than uh, has been there historically and therefore can indicate that things might be getting a little bit rough in the markets and in the economy in the short to near term, short to medium term period. Economic indicators number 12 and 13 uh, really have to do with employment. The unemployment rate itself, but also the continuing jobless claims, are both usually lagging indicators because companies typically don't like to let people go until it's a bit of a last resort, just because of the investment and the cost of rehiring. However, it is a good indicator to watch for. Um, the weekly, or the continuing jobless claims, is a weekly indicator, whereas the unemployment rate is a monthly. So. Uh, one or the, the, the weekly continuing jobless claims is a bit of a predictor for the unemployment rate and together they can kind of paint the labor picture in the economy as a whole. So to recap from the top, GDP number one, retail sales year over year as a predictor of GDP, uh, consumer confidence as a bit of a heads up on what might be happening in terms of saving and spending habits. Uh, the leading economic indicator basket, which kind of gives you an idea of what might be happening uh, upcoming in the economy, but might be a little bit uh, chicken little like in its predictive powers, followed by the business confidence indicators in terms of the PMI for manufacturing and non-manufacturing. Then we have the inflation indicator uh, on the consumer side, 
then also on the producer side the fed fund interest rate which is used obviously in conjunction with the measurement of inflation to help cool the economy or stimulate it in uh, rough patches uh, after that we've got the spread between the 10-year and the two-year treasury bonds um, we also have the absolute yield in the 10-year itself and finally uh, the employment indicators including the uh, jobless claims continuing jobless claims which are produced on a weekly basis and the unemployment rate itself which obviously is the monthly indicator so when we look at all of those indicators together uh, no one of them is actually going to tell us what's going to happen but when they begin to behave in a similar manner the lead indicator is obviously taking the lead and the lagging indicator is confirming what the lead indicators are telling us what that helps us do effectively or helps me do is understand what might be happening in the economy and then I can take that information and based on that allocate my portfolio to the assets that I think are going to help protect me or help me take advantage of what I believe is going to happen. So I start with that macroeconomic view and then I sort of move down from there. But this is definitely the most critical piece to the puzzle of investing in my view. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you like what you saw in this video today, please do hit the like button. I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section. If there's anything you want me to cover in more detail, feel free to also help me understand that there. And if you want to be a subscriber, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Obviously, I want to be able to share this with as many people as possible. Uh, I think what I have to offer is very important. And I think um, it gives a little bit of a different insight to people who might be interested in doing investing for themselves. So once again, Thank you and hopefully we'll see you back here soon.